Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Scorpio is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free, it does not cost you anything. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask that you connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Scorpio, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And very fine, Ten of Cups, pure bliss. This is ultimate satisfaction. This is the dream come true. This is everything that you've ever wanted in life, right? This is your ideal dream life, happiest life, the best that you could ask for, right? Satisfied every aspect of your being, every aspect of your life is fulled, uh, filled to the brim, right? It's very good. Let's put this into some context. Let's see what is it that will allow us to experience that, right? What are we doing in our lives to get closer to that? And what might be in the way of us getting to that? All right. Let's see what we've got. <clears throat> oh, interesting. We've got an Ace of Pentacles. We've got a Knight of Cups. A Two of Wands. And we've got a, hmm, a Seven of pentacles and a hierophant. This is this is strange because I feel like um, I feel like there's kind of this reluctance for you to take control of something. Yeah, I feel like there's a step that you want to make that you need to make to get to your best life, but there's some sort of blockage. There's some force in your life that's saying no. That's not the way. Thou shall not pass. Right, kind of that Gandalf energy. Uh, we've got the star, we've got the adjustment card, we've got the eon, and we've got the hanged man. Now, this card was just about to come out, so I, I feel like this card wants to come out. We'll put it over here as just kind of a maybe, as a potential. Like, this is just over here kind of tempting us, right? It's kind of half in, half out, that card. This is what we could be having. This is what we could experience, and that's real harmony. This is, this is a really good day over here with the six of cups, okay? But I feel like there's something that's kind of blocking your progress. There's some, <clears throat> and this might just be like the institution. This might just be like society or the world or your family or your own brain that just says, thou shalt not pass, right? That's kind of saying, no, I know better. This isn't a good idea. But you really feel it. But of course, you're worried about it failing. What if, what if they're right? Yeah, what if they're right? Um... A lot of major arcana here. We have all major arcana up the path of the serpent. This doesn't happen very often. All right, this doesn't happen very often. And what the Hierophant really could be indicating is that you need to start being your own authority here. You give yourself permission to do what you think is right for your best life, to get to your ideal, to get to your Ten of Cups. You've got to take this next step. You've got to have the will to do it. And your will, you can't be split into two. It's got to be one. Your, your impulse, your idea, your creativity, your will has to be one, and it has to go all into this ace of pentacles, right? But you've got two, which kind of means to me that you're kind of sh you're shifting between two different options. Should I yes? Should I no? Should I go left, right, one, two, up, down? You know, we're in this world of, of opposites, and um, if we just get stuck here, we're not going to make the progress toward our best life. We're certainly not going to experience any tranquility, any rest, any peace, any you know, pleasure. We're going to just be struggling with trying to find the one answer that we need. Yeah. And then once we find that one answer that we need, once our will becomes one, singular, we still have to give it a vessel. We still have to translate that into an action, into a behavior. We have to take that fire down from heaven and manifest it on earth. Well, 
you're not going to hit your target if you have these two, if you have like a zigzag, you have it's all split up into different directions. No, you need one, and it needs one target, right? It's one bullseye. You're not just throwing a whole handful of darts at the wall and just seeing what sticks. No, there's this certainty that you're after. And, um, and I feel like that's, that's already something that you've worked out. Because we've got this seven of pentacles up here. You know that throwing uh, a lot of different things doesn't really, doesn't really work. Now, I know if we're talking agriculture, it's kind of like, yeah, you want to have a handful of seeds and you want to scatter them everywhere. Something will grow. That's not what we're doing here. I think you've tried that and you realize it didn't work. You have to put all of your, all of your seeds in one basket, so to speak, right? Um, you're putting everything in. There's this, there's this one effort, this one focus. There's one path forward that you're looking for. I think you've tried to do the other methods and it didn't amount to anything. And this is something that you're feeling with your whole heart. You're putting your whole heart into it. Knight of Cups down here. You're offering everything you have. This is the ultimate sacrifice. You're giving it everything you've got, right? Everything that you've got. But then we kind of run into this energy. I don't know if this is a person, if this is an institution or the, the job or something that's kind of making you feel like your everything isn't enough. You're all in. Well, sorry, you still can't play at the table. Excuse me? Um, so I think we're, we're trying to bypass this, or we're trying to become this. We need to be our own authority here. We need to realize that we have a direct connection with the divine source, with the spiritual energy, and we don't need approval from anyone else. We don't need, if, if I don't know, if you're trying to publish something, right? Like, if the publisher says, no, we don't want it, or that's terrible, or that's a horrible idea, you suck, like, that doesn't matter. They're not the they're not the authority here. They're not the um, they're not the 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 end all be all of of this this energy. You, do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, so I feel like we have to be we have to be a little bit steeled, a little bit fortified against people like this. Okay. Um, or institution, or even against like rejection, or against anybody that is acting as kind of a gatekeeper for our progress, or barring our progress, or with that thou not, shall not pass kind of energy. Okay. Um, and just because one person kind of rejects the manuscript, it's not it's not a reason for you to give up. It does not mean that you are a failure. And that I think is a very uh, that's a very important thing for you to know, right? Because I don't know that you really take like that kind of rejection very well. Where you put all your heart and soul into this thing and somebody doesn't like it, or that record company didn't want it, or the publisher didn't didn't care for it and didn't want to didn't want to publish the book. That's okay. That's just that's like that's one opinion, right? And it doesn't matter if there are a thousand people that say that to you. What matters is your efforts into this situation. What matters is the value that you find in doing this work. Okay, it doesn't mean that you're ever going to get published, right? Um, and that's kind of beside the point. If we look around here, we don't see a lot of Earth energy. We see some, yeah, of course. So this is a, a situation where it's not it's not really the rewards that you're after. It's not like you're trying to publish a book just for the clout, just for the money or whatever. I don't know how much money is in books. Um, as publishers certainly have gotten enough money from me for books. I have quite a, a big library. Um, but I don't know how much actually gets to the author. It's not for that purpose. You know, you don't write a book to get rich. I had an English professor that said, don't become a writer if you want to get rich. You become a writer because you love to write. Because that's who you are and that's what you do. That is you taking your heart and soul out of your chest and putting it onto... Uh, paper, canvas, whatever it is, right? Uh, the money is, is something else. And if you happen to get rich from it, I think you're kind of, you're an exception to the rule. Um, so there's this idea of the, the validation that we get 
from somebody, if somebody's willing to pay us for what we do, well, then I must be good at it, right? That's not always the case. And that gets into a whole other realm of, of what's going on in the world that I don't want to get into. Um, but this is that kind of gatekeeper. This is someone that tells you that you're not good enough, um, that everything that you've put down on paper or on canvas or on wax or whatever is not, not worth anything. Well, that's nonsense, right? And you need to be, again, fortified against this kind of energy. You need to become your own authority, your own kind of, um, your own judge, really. And that's kind of what we see over here. Let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Pamela Coleman Smith Tarot. And yes, I leave Waite's name out intentionally sometimes just to kind of mess with him a little bit. We're going to put Alien Simon Mork Ripley right there on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end. But that card will tie everything together and it will give us our confirmation at the end of the reading. If at any point during the reading you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments. All right. Um, let's make it a group exercise, right, of, of intuition. All right. Let's take a look around again. We know we've got major, 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 major. We've got some fire. We've got some water. We don't have any air except for what's going on here. And these are both air energies. It's Libra and Aquarius. These are air cards. And then we've got our earth energies here as well as the earth with the, uh, the Hierophant card. Okay. Now, I feel, like that, I feel like you are doing something that is going to be a big breakthrough for you. We've got this fire energy over here with the Eon card. This is going to lead to a big breakthrough for you. You're going to really break the mold, break through the ceiling or, or whatever it is, right? You're going to break into this industry. I don't know if you're a writer, an artist, a uh, musician, or, uh, I don't know, something like that. You're going to achieve the, the progress that you want, right? You're going to make it big. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling here. But you're going to have to go through a lot of cycles, a lot of people telling you that you can't do it. A lot of people are telling, if you look at any, any good, any, I don't say good and famous, but those aren't always the same thing. Um, if you look at, at any artist that you admire, I bet that they have gone through a lot of rejection. A lot of people probably told them they sucked, right? They went through a lot of these kind of people or institutions or scenarios or experiences, but they kept going. For every success, there is a thousand failures behind it. The failure is just the prototype of success. And when you fail, maybe we let failure be our hierophant, be our initiator, be our teacher, right? Learn from those failures and even the criticism that comes back to us. We don't want to just be like, ah, your opinion doesn't mean anything, you jerk. Let's listen and let's take that Let's take that as counsel, not to lose hope, not to feel like a failure, not to give up, not to be demotivated, but to say, okay, how can I improve what I'm doing? Is there any, is there any credence to what they're saying? And can I improve what I'm doing? How can I make it better? This is the prototype. How can I tweak things? And the next version will be a little bit better. We have to learn how to accept criticism. We have to learn how to accept our failures. Otherwise, the first time uh, that your crop doesn't grow, well, you're just going to quit being a farmer. That doesn't make any sense, right? Um, Spirit's telling me that there there is something connected with a school here. I don't know if you used to work at a school um, or if there's some... Uh, maybe you went to school for something, uh, maybe an art school or, uh, I don't know, some kind of a school or university. Um, and I feel like you also started working there too. Maybe like extra money working in the cafeteria or maybe as a, t a, uh, a teacher's assistant or whatever those types of people are called. Um, but there is some connection there for you, right? Spirit's telling me about that. Um, and so I think if that's true, that puts you in a kind of an awkward position too because it's just like you feel like you should be on the other side of that, but then here somebody is telling you something that you don't want to hear. Um, and so maybe there's a little bit of pride there too that needs to be um, just tempered a little bit. Yeah. Let's move over to the Path of the Serpent. And as we talk about these cards, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's good for the channel, and I appreciate that. All right, win-win situation here. 
Um, first card we've got, of course, is that star card. This is your uh, your guiding star, your guiding light, your load star. Okay, and this is this is what you've been pursuing your whole life. This is what you've been sacrificing everything you have to. This is your divinity. This is your god, goddess, deity. Okay. Um, I also feel like you've been, you do like open mics or something, right? Like, I feel you're on some sort of a stage, not really a stage, more of a podium, uh, speaking, right? I don't know if you're giving a lecture, if you're giving a presentation, if you're reading poetry, but I see you at a podium speaking, yeah? I don't know, that might be part of this, might be part of the school thing that you had that connection with, with Spirit showing me kind of someone at a podium uh, with a microphone, I don't know if you're giving a presentation or something, yeah. But I feel like this has been um, this has been a kind of a, a long dream for you. This has been a long, a long hard road, yeah. And I feel with the Ten of Cups here that this is really this is something that you're you're staking your entire future on this. That this is something that you have always wanted. There's been there's never been anything else that you wanted as much as this. And this is one of you're one of those rare people. I th and I think, I think Scorpio is very common for Scorpio. I feel like you knew from an early age what you wanted in life. And to me, I'm so envious of that. I'll, I'll let you in on a personal secret there. Um, I've never been able to, I've never had that. I've never felt like I knew from a young age exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, you see a lot of people that they were just, from the time they were five years old, they were always like playing the drums or they were singers or they were writers or they were, um, you know, they had this this strong sense of identity. They knew what they wanted. They knew what they wished to become in life, you know. And um, I feel like that that's very common for Scorpio. I feel like you probably from a young age, you knew this is what you wanted to do or something like it, something akin to it, right? Maybe not exactly the details, but um, you knew it was something along these lines, right? Because you had a very strong sense of your spiritual identity, of your karma, of your path in life. You saw a glimpse of this star from a very young age. And not everybody does. And you've been hanging on to this. And that's the key is to not let this go, not to, to let life, not to let the ocean waves knock you off course to where you don't see this light anymore. You've always been fixed on it. Yeah, always been fixed on it. I think that the, it's really, it's serving you well. And I think that you were meant to see this message right now because I think that um, you need a little bit of a push to continue your commitment. You need a little confirmation. You need spirit to come in and just say, no, don't give up. Because I feel like you're kind of, you're, you're hanging on by a thread right now. No, keep going. Keep going. Um, you've been hearing the same song repeating lately, right? Everywhere you go, it seems like that one song is playing in the car, at the grocery store, at the whatever store. Um, <clears throat> I feel like there's one song that keeps kind of repeating. And it kind of, uh, I don't know why, but it's like that Eye of the Tiger song. Um, I don't know if you know what song that is, but it's like a kind of, it's, it's kind of a cheesy kind of cliche type song. Um, but it's like, it's not a song that you would intentionally put on necessarily like to listen to, but you hear it everywhere you go lately. It's a message. It's trying to tell you something. It's trying to tell you to hang on, you know, to keep going. Yeah. Okay. So the judgment card, uh, justice card. And not judgment. This is judgment. This is justice or adjustment. It's in the position of your environment. And so this is really making that connection that you need to make. To me, this feels like that's the record deal. That's the publishing contract. This is you getting hired in this industry. Maybe this isn't necessarily an artistic thing. Um, I think that... Um, I think that we're all artists. I think it doesn't matter if you work in a factory, if you work in an office, if you are delivering things uh, if you work from home on the computer it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you do we can all be the an artist right and i always say on this channel it's not what you're doing but how and why okay uh so you might just you might have like an office job or something i don't know what it is but with this i feel like this is you getting it's securing that relationship that you wanted this is kind of this is where somebody says, I want to publish that book. 
or here's your record contract, right? Um, or here's the job offer or somebody that accepts your, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're an inventor. Maybe you're like trying to get on Shark Tank or something. Um, this is saying, okay, yeah, let's do it. You know, you're getting, you're getting what you need here. And so you're making those the right connection. And I think this is coming right down the line for you. And this is why it's so important for you to hang on right now. Right. Uh, and not give up because I feel like you're very close to this success. And this success is really going to blow the doors off of things. This is the judgment card. Rebirth, reawakening. You're meant to see this message because this doorway to your future is so close right now that you, you cannot quit right now because it is so close. What we want is this pleasure, this good life. We want a good day. This is really like you get that record deal and you just want to go out and celebrate that night. You know, um, this is really, this is that, that kind of feeling. Yeah. And, uh, I feel like you're, you're right on the cusp of that. You're right on the doorstep of this really major change in your life. Okay. And I'm getting a connection to Paris, France. I don't know what, what is the connection? Spirit's telling me Paris, France. You live there, have somebody that lives there. That's where you want to be. Or there's something there. Maybe you got a pen pal. Uh, there's a connection there with Paris. Okay. And also an M name. I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's a male or female energy, but I'm getting an M name from Spirit. That's meant for you. Okay. Uh, with the judgment card. <clears throat> This is this has been a difficult road. And I think that you would agree that this path that you've been on has really stripped away everything from you that was not essential. I feel like you've had to sacrifice a lot. And you're just kind of crawling across the finish line just parched and ready for that glass of water. Right? Just like you've been just kind of crawling um across the desert and now you've you've made it and this this is your reward. This is now that oasis that you're uh, arriving at. Okay. And this makes it all worth it. It really does. Well, we see the hanged man card on the other side of this. <clears throat> and maybe the, um, maybe the hanged man is this kind of choice that we have right now. You know, not, not always does the hanged man talk about a choice. The, the hanged man is kind of like a card that just says, um, I'm enduring something, right? But there is still a choice there. How are we going to handle that? We are suffering for this kind of, you're kind of like one of these, these suffering artists, right? A starving artist kind of vibe. And with the hanged man, it feels like, how are we handling this situation that we're in? This is a situation that we, we can't really change, right? That we've, yes, we've put ourselves in this position, but we're not really going to change it. This is, this is what we do. This is me striving and struggling and suffering for my art. Um, is this you lamenting that or is this you kind of, um, being okay with it because you know that it's, it's leading you somewhere. And this is a reminder here that, um, we don't, there is no, there is no spirituality in suffering, right? Suffering itself does not make you a spiritual person, does not give you success, Right? Um, well, it's, it's kind of like these, uh, extreme, uh, ascetics that will just torture their bodies, right? And think that they're achieving enlightenment thereby. Now, maybe they do. Who am I to say? But what Spirit's saying right now is that it's not the suffering that is making you so successful. The suffering is just something that you have to endure to get to that success, right? It's not, um, I mean, I think it, it's, it's helping to form who you are but there's no inherent value in the suffering itself because otherwise it's just a form of punishment and we are just, we're just punishing ourselves for really no reason. Right. Um, <clears throat> so this is also a car that says, hang on, you're able to endure the hardships. Um, once those hardships are over, once you've achieved the success, allow yourself to have the water, allow yourself to drink and eat at the oasis. Okay. Pull yourself out of this suffering. There's no need to, to suffer like that anymore. Now it's a triumph. You volunteered for this and it is grueling. It is enduring, right? But there is a purpose to it. There's no value in this grueling kind of suffering just on its own. 
Okay, and that I think uh, that's kind of a contentious point, I think, because there are a lot of people that that see things differently. Um, I see that kind of endurance or suffering as a means to an end, not as the end itself. Yeah, this I think is the end. Pure joy, it's bliss, right? It makes it all worthwhile. It's the um, you know you're running a marathon, and you are just you're driving your physical body to the limit, right? You're exhausted, you hurt everywhere, you're thirsty, you're just wasting away. It's just, it's, it's nuts, right? And sure, there's a lot of character building going on there. You are challenging your body. There's a lot that's, that's going on because of that suffering. But um, there's something in the crossing that finish line. There's something in the accomplishment that makes all that suffering worthwhile. This is you in the winner circle. Okay, and uh, you've got to allow yourself to enjoy the fruits of your labor. But like I said, this card's kind of out of reach. This is uh, this is the card that's kind of half in and half out. So the message there is: Are you are you giving up over here, or are you going to continue to endure and get to this oasis? Right. This isn't guaranteed yet. You still have a choice to make. You have to choose whether or not to continue with this work or to take this failure as the kind of final answer, the final decision, right? This is the opinion that matters, and then you quit. So that's the card there that, that's asking you that question. Are you going to quit, or are you going to keep going? Let's look at the mystery card, though. This might give us uh, a little bit of a clue. I'm hoping it's another Six of Cups, honestly, yeah. or something of similar virtue. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. Here we go. Ah, a five. Five of pentacles. Um, this, again, if we look at this card, these people are moving forward. They're suffering. They're enduring. They're traveling somewhere. They're passing by that what might be what maybe that's a shelter. Maybe that's a food bank. Maybe that's a luxury hotel. Maybe that is their best friend's house. Maybe that's their own house. They're choosing the path of the cold, the dark, and the kind of weary, lonesome route. Um, not because that's where they want to be. Of course, they want to be inside that shelter getting warm, eating the good food. But they're on their way somewhere. And it must be a pretty good somewhere if they're willing to walk past whatever this, this place is. Well, that, that's the solace. That is the comfort. They're willing to leave that behind and venture out into the snowy, cold darkness. It must be a very good reason. Yeah. And I think you have a very good reason, too. And we're going to do an extended reading. If you want to watch the extended, there's a link in the corner. There's a link at the end of the video. And there's one down in the video description. New readings for Scorpio every Wednesday and Saturday. But I am here every single day. You can come back and see me again tomorrow. All right. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. And uh, leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.